Super Typhoon Yagi is an absolute monster of a storm and it's only a few hours away from making landfall on China. This is what you need to know. Hey everyone, I'm James Reynolds and this is Earth Uncut TV. I'm not actually chasing Yagi, so I thought the next best thing to do would be to make a little video about it. So right now, Yagi is churning over the northern South China Sea. It is an absolute benchmark beast of a super typhoon. The Japanese Meteorological Agency currently have it classed as a violent typhoon. A minimum pressure of 915 HPA, sustained winds of 105 knots, 10 minute average. And I get this with gusts to 150 knots, which is close to 280 kilometers an hour like wind speeds like that are quite hard to wrap your head around this kind of system's pretty rare let alone being so close to land in the south china sea and unfortunately yeah it's only a few hours away from impacting hainan island as well as the Lajo peninsula just to the north now it's been a bit of an up and down 24 hours for this typhoon it first hit super typhoon status about 24 hours ago and then it started to weaken what really was going on was called an eyewall replacement cycle. It's this period of instability in a storm's life, especially these very strong typhoons, where the eyewall starts to degrade and this, this outer eyewall forms around kind of the remnants of the inner eyewall. And this can induce some temporary weakening. This is exactly what happened uh, with, with Yagi yesterday. And then it rebounded. That new eyewall formed, solidified, and the whole storm system started intensifying again. So strong super typhoons like this are pretty rare in the South China Sea. And actually, Yagi is the strongest storm system we've seen up there since super typhoon Ramesson in 2014. And that actually made landfall in Hainan Island as a 140 knot category five typhoon. I don't think Yagi is gonna make landfall as a category five. The latest satellite frames show like some warming cloud tops, maybe the start of another eyewall replacement cycle, but this is still gonna be a massive impactful hit. So across vast swathes of the Western Pacific this year, we've seen very, very high anomalous sea surface temperatures. And it looks like Yagi has really taken advantage of that. The South China Sea itself was like a boiling cauldron. All this fuel and heat contained in the ocean, which is exactly what these storms need to intensify into these monster super typhoons. And low shear environment, lots of moisture. You know, this storm had all the ingredients it needed to blossom into this powerhouse close to category five super typhoon. So here's a look at the latest JMA warning track and you can see the storm is supposed to start moving a little bit northward soon, but it looks unfortunately for Hainan Island that a direct hit and landfall is unavoidable for them now. And it's gonna truck straight over Hainan and impact the Lajo Peninsula. And then after that, it's gonna crash into Vietnam sometime on Saturday afternoon. So once this starts moving into Hainan Island, the storm itself is gonna be weakening rapidly due to land interaction. And by the time it gets to Vietnam, it's gonna be considerably weaker, but it's still gonna be a potent system. It's gonna be typhoon force, and it's gonna drop a lot of rain over the mountainous interior of the country. So unfortunately, we've got a setup which looks like you know significant flooding is very likely, flash floods, landslides. So this is gonna be a dangerous high impact system for Vietnam, even though it's not gonna be making landfall as a super typhoon there. It's gonna be an incredibly rough evening for whoever's unlucky enough to be in the eye wall of Yagi as it moves into China this evening. What I've done is I've put together a few clips just to show what it's like inside the eye wall of a category four typhoon, just to get a sense of, of what those raging winds are like, and what I call the washing machine effect, which you get in these very, very powerful eye walls where there's just rain flying everywhere. You literally cannot see across the street in which you're standing. It's really hard to imagine for those who haven't actually witnessed it firsthand before. Uh, but the clips I'm showing, yeah, they, these are obviously not from Yagi itself, but from previous typhoons, which I've filmed, but they give like a good sense of, of you know, just how violent and dangerous and unpleasant that, you know, these Cat 4 eye walls can be. So why aren't I chasing Yagi? Well, it's complicated. Nothing in the Western Pacific is straightforward when it comes to chasing typhoons. So for China, you know, British passport holders like me, I'd need a visa to get there. And it's not the kind of country where you can just rock up with lots of cameras, uh, jump in a rental car and hit the road and have completely free movement to just drive around by yourself. 
Uh, it involves getting a driver and there's all sorts of, you know, internet connection issues and other things like that, which just make it hard for me to do my job efficiently and with the freedom that I need. And another point about this is just the geography of, of China and the landfall area where, where Yagi is tracking. Now, if I was chasing this and I'm kind of armchair chasing it, I would have positioned myself on the Leijo Peninsula. All the model guidance yesterday was showing that this typhoon was very likely to be crashing in kind of quite a bit further north than where it is. I wouldn't have been on Hainan Island. I would have been out of position and, you know, in the wrong place and basically busting on this typhoon. So please let me know if you enjoyed this type of video. This is something new I'm experimenting with and I want to develop, especially if there's interest in this kind of thing. I'm, I've got a whole list of ideas of, of videos in my head that I want to explore, you know, different topics about, you know, how do you track a typhoon right from its origins up to landfall? Other types of videos like my top five closest calls or my top 10 craziest wind gusts. Also do some analysis, maybe some historical, uh, looking back on some old historical typhoons. Uh, just a, a wide range of content which I think might interest you and keep the channel, you know, ticking over and growing, especially when I'm not chasing. So please let me know in the comments below what you think, what kind of topics you might be interested in. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next typhoon.